Hi everyone. Thanks for visiting my channel today. I'm Lori Hale. Well, the consistent message coming from Trump and his campaign is that we must compromise on abortion limits if we want to win elections, and that the hardline stand of no compromise, no exceptions, no middle ground is going to turn voters off. They say, you must be reasonable. However, as believers, our allegiance is not to a man or a political party, but to God and his kingdom. We express our pro-kingdom stance by upholding the Lord's standards in every area of our lives, which includes how we vote. We know the anatomy of his creation, and we know that human life begins at conception. Intrinsically valuable, genetically unique, and we must be unwavering on this position, no matter the personal or public cost. We cannot sit back and allow abortion to continue to destroy the lives of the unborn, the women it exploits, and the destiny of our nation. We must decide to value human life above everything else and reject a temporary solution so we can get back to life as usual. If we as the church don't stand up now for innocent human life and refuse to vote for any candidate that is running on a pro-abortion platform, we have not only sided with evil, but we have given our assent to the deaths of thousands of innocent preborn human lives, which will, as the Lord has shown me, negatively impact the future of our nation for generations to come. This is what I heard the Lord say. The hour has come for the true abolitionists to rise up and make their voices heard, and so must stand as a unified force, unwavering in their commitment to uphold the sanctity of all human life. For surely this nation is on the brink of being fully engulfed in darkness, as that which should be considered sacred, and therefore highly favored, has become nothing more than a bargaining chip used by some to garner political favor then it is time for those who are staunch advocates for the rights of the preborn to assemble and boldly march out upon this field of battle, absent the fear of receiving any form of reprisals, as the opinions of man are to bear no weight in this matter. Therefore, any voice which promotes taking a more reasonable approach to this issue of abortion is to be shunned. For the line that I have drawn will not yield to compromise, nor does it allow room for exceptions, as indeed I am adamant in my position that abortion at any stage or for any reason is abhorrent. So then it should also be regarded as such by those who claim to be my children. See then the stance of my own should be unrelenting when it comes to this issue of abortion, for they are unwilling to make even a single concession with this evil practice, and as such, will not align themselves with anyone who does, regardless how unpopular that decision may be. Though maintaining this hard line against abortion is likely to come with a high personal cost, even still must my children march on, for they should not count the infanticide being done upon their shores as a secondary matter nor should they simply attempt to ignore its existence. Then in this very hour, am I requiring more from my own who call America home? Thus shall each one come face to face with an unavoidable test, where they will have to prove their anti-abortion claims with more than just words or a few monetary donations to the pro-life cause. For it is much easier to declare, I am against abortion, than it is to actually live it out, where an individual stands ardently opposed to the murder of the unborn, even if that means laying the outcome of their own future on the line. And so has a moment of proving come to the church in America, as indeed are the elect who reside within her borders being called to make a bold demonstration of their faith, where they withhold their vote from any candidate that compromises even the slightest with the wicked practice of abortion, no matter who it is, as even a single acquiescence with this evil leaves open a door for the enemy to re-enter, and surely is he determined to reclaim the ground he has already lost. 
So then has this challenge been issued across the entire landscape of the church in America, without exception, regardless of their ministerial position or denominational affiliation? For all must now choose upon which side of this issue they will stand. However, let it be made clear, lest it be forgotten, that there exists no middle ground on this matter of abortion, and therefore any attempt to maintain a neutral stance shall automatically be viewed as partnering with the enemy. For even accepting limitations on abortion is still standing in agreement with its practice. Then I say to the elect in America, rise up, for I am calling you forth to make public your stand. Do, do you not see that the lives of the preborn are in a great state of peril? For those national leaders who once championed their cause are already poised to concede ground in this fight, as it is the opinion of likely voters that drives the decision of these men and women, and not any kind of crisis to their conscience. Hear me then, you children of the Most High God. Arise, arise, and make your voices heard. See then, in this hour am I calling for a two-pronged attack, where not only do you prayerfully contend against the evil of abortion in your nation, but also that you join your voices together with a public declaration of your intentions, putting those running for public office on notice, that you will not cast your vote in the direction of any candidate who does not fully support the right to life. Even this call to action for it is incumbent upon every believer in this nation to take seriously this ongoing battle against abortion, as the future generations of America will be gravely impacted even more so than now if the church refuses to make a stand. Thanks again for joining me today.